Yesterday, the Chief Minister outlined how the first stage of the COVID vaccine will roll out in the Northern Territory. One of the next groups to be vaccinated will be the Territory's Indigenous community. To make that happen, an extraordinary planning operation has been going on for months to ensure Aboriginal health services like Darwin's Danila Dilba can meet the challenge. Dr Andrew Webster is the Head of Clinical Governance at Danila Dilba. Uh, Dr Webster, can you give us a sense of the size and the scale um, and I guess the complexity of what you're hoping to achieve? Look, it's it's completely unprecedented. It's the first time we've had to do anything on this scale. To give you an idea of numbers, we look like we're going to vaccinate about 30,000 individual doses. So let's say 15 to 20,000 people, 30,000 doses. And if we look at our flu vaccination season last year, which was a very good season, we vaccinated 4,000 people. So maybe 10 times bigger than our flu vaccination season. And we're all going to try and do this as quickly and as safely as possible, of course, but maybe over the next six months. When you talk about the size of this rollout, um, how are your facilities equipped to handle these sort of numbers? Well, the reality is that we can't deliver the vaccine through our standard clinics. So what we need to do is to develop specific vaccination centres. As I said, the scale of this is absolutely unprecedented. So we need to take a much more um, innovative approach to delivering the vaccine. So we're thinking and planning to have two vaccine centres in the Darwin and Palmerston region which will be a one-stop shop specific location for getting a vaccine as quickly and as efficiently and as safely as possible. Now, last year we saw the Northern Territory government introduced biosecurity zones uh, very quickly and also travel restrictions to remote communities. Uh, this time around with the vaccine, we see Indigenous groups are very high up on the order of the rollout. Why is it so important that the Indigenous community gets vaccinated early? So priority groups are based on a couple of things, one of which is vulnerability and the risk of the population of getting severely ill from COVID. Now, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, as, as many people know, have higher rates of chronic diseases, but also there's specifics around um, the living environment. So many people live in overcrowded houses, live in very close communities, but also have a lot of mobility between remote communities and town. All of that means that if there was an outbreak of COVID in the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community in Darwin or anywhere else around the country, it could be absolutely devastating for people. So having a vaccine early on, making sure that lots of people get it, is going to be really important for protecting this group in the community. And the last thing I'll just mention is there is a lot of, I guess, misinformation out in the community. There's a lot of concerns from people about getting this vaccination. Is that sort of um, misinformation a risk to the program that you're trying to roll out? I think the misinformation comes from fear and concern that people have, and I think that's genuine in a lot of circles. And what I'm saying to people and what I'm encouraging people to do is to talk to their trusted health professionals about these worries. Because if you do have these worries, get the information from a health professional rather than from social media or the internet. Get it from someone you trust who might know something about this rather than just the, the keyboard warrior who's on the internet trying to write something that's going to get some likes. So. Talk to someone you trust, get some good information and then make a good decision and then hopefully as many people as possible will get the vaccine. Dr Webster, thank you for your time. Thank you.